Director Neil Marshall was at one time considered one of the foremost directors of horror with a one-two punch of Dog Soldiers and The Descent. He followed it up with a couple of fairly decent movies, although they didn't have quite the panache of that original two with the likes of Doomsday and Centurion. But his later works have been a little on the weaker side. So here he is with The Layer. And this one is co-written with Charlotte Kirk, who also stars in, its, in the movie as our main character, Ray Skywalker. I mean, Sinclair. And this, to me, takes elements from both The Descent and Dog Soldiers and kind of combines them to a kind of hybrid movie. We have that kind of military aspect of Dog Soldiers and the kind of the siege uh, of a kind of a small encampment with kind of underground creatures. So what's the story? Well, it focuses on Sinclair, who is a pilot who gets kind of shot down over Af Afghanistan and is picked up by a group of uh, US military types, but not before she's discovered a secret underground bunker, which the Russians thought they were doing some dodgy experiments on during their time in Afghanistan. And of course, these are creatures, genetically altered creatures that are, you know, living killing machines that seem to take an interest in Sinclair and her new group of allies. Along with that, you've obviously got the Afghan forces to deal with as well. Uh, so it ultimately becomes a kind of a siege movie with these kind of these creatures which are afraid of the light, attacking this, uh, this small uh, military base. Uh, what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss The Lair. Now this movie, to me, is a good example of an entertaining movie, which when you look at the kind of the construction of it, has some serious kind of issues. On a critical level, it's quite problematic, but it's still kind of fun. So let's go into a little bit more detail of, with what I mean. So let's talk about what works first of all. You know, Neil Marshall, when his films come out, I'm quite excited because he has had a reasonable track record and two absolute bangers. He's also done a few uh, episodes of like Game of Thrones and stuff as well. And they're the, kind of the, the bigger battle episodes. So, you know, he has got a kind of a proven track record. So he's a competent director here. And although this seems like a lower budget movie at times, it's still somewhat of an ambitious movie. You know, we've got fighter jets, we've got underground bases, we've got military, uh, you know, encampments, we've got lots of kind of like firefights, uh, practical kind of creature effects. It's very ambitious. Um, it struggles a little bit with a budget, I'm going to say. Uh, but I, I've got to say it still has a, a, a feeling of, you know, pushing this probably to the absolute best this budget could probably do in regards to its kind of uh, technical aspects and things like that and what it could include. Um, I have to say the, the whole idea here, and I don't want to go into spoilers necessarily, is quite an interesting one. And there's a, a, a kind of a, a great bit of revisionist history about why the Russians uh, may have invaded kind of Afghanistan in the first place, which I thought was a great addition and uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's uh, a fun one, which gives it a sci-fi kind of horror twist. I really like some of the characters here. Um, we actually get an Afghan prisoner uh, captured by the Americans, who I have to say was by hands down the, the, my favourite character in this movie. Um, you know, being quite a, you know, really kind of stealing these things, I've got to say, when he's actually on screen, um, becoming kind of more allied with the... Uh, uh, you know, the American and British forces, that's the kind of the film goes on. But with them, so I have to say, some great kind of line delivery when he's kind of like, you know, swearing and when he can't believe what, he, what he's seeing and things like that. I thought he was, I thought he was hilarious. And there are, a, there are a kind of one or two other kind of like, the, of the soldier characters here, uh, particularly like this, this Welsh SAS guy that kind of turns up as well, which I thought was, uh, you know, again, some nice kind of additions here. The movie is fast paced. It is, it is an entertaining movie. And this is kind of what I was saying. I mean, I, I'm going to come on to why this, what I think does not work with this, with this movie. And, and, you know, there is a reasonable amount. But I was entertained. As much as I can kind of pick holes in some of the kind of the, the aspects I'm going to in a minute, it doesn't take away that I was entertained with this movie. This is a great example of a B movie, which, you know, has some problems. It maybe skips over some logic and things like that. But it's an entertaining movie if you can kind of somewhat switch your brain off and kind of, you know, just accept it for a kind of a fun, 
cheesy ride. It's fast paced, the monsters are kind of fun, they have an interesting kind of origin. We've got some kind of interesting kind of characters, there's lots of kind of action. And there are elements here that will kind of take you back to really the descent and the dog soldiers. Maybe it skirts a little bit too close to it at times, but and ultimately I think loses some of its own identity. But nonetheless, it's kind of fun still seeing these kind of sequences and things like that, uh, which I kind of which I kind of quite enjoyed. And you know, it's okay. It's all around. A, I think a fairly good kind of crowd pleaser kind of type movie. Um, what doesn't work for me? Okay, uh, I think the biggest thing for me is some of the writing here is quite poor. Now, Charlotte Kirk is actually our main character, Sinclair. She co-wrote this with Neil Marshall. Uh, the character of Sinclair kind of seems like a Mary Sue, to be honest with you. I mean, she's a pilot. She, you know, we see her kind of like flying a jet, then she's kind of down and she takes out about 20 kind of Afghan, uh, you know, uh, insurgents and things like this without any too much kind of trouble. Um, she, you know, she seems to jump into kind of battle and more or less always kind of come out on top, things like that. So she does seem a somewhat of a kind of a Mary Sue kind of character, the way she's kind of written, which is why, why I meant the comparison to kind of Ray Skywalker. The other thing is, well, the dialogue here is, is, kind of bad um this will take you back to like a kind of 90s movie in regards to kind of dialogue and and if you kind of you know you can watch a 90s movie and think i don't know it's of its time but this is a modern movie so you can't kind of get away with it even though it's if it's homaging those kind of films and you kind of watch it as a, as a fun element and think oh yeah cheesy one-liners horrible kind of like cliche kind of like macho kind of dialogue things like this it kind of seems uh you know, a little a little garish at times. And I've got to be honest with you, some of the delivery isn't good either. Um, Kirk, who was in uh, another kind of recent Neil Marshall movie, The Reckoning, which I've got to say wasn't really up to scratch either. I have to be honest with you, was a little bit wooden at times, at least. Not maybe not all the time, but in this movie, I, I felt like her performance was kind of stilted. The other thing, this being a British movie, we have a lot of British actors doing uh, American accents. Now, that's no nothing kind of new. We, we, we see that quite often with low budget kind of uh, British movies to try and appeal to uh, you know US audiences. Um, but I think some of the kind of the choices here to have these kind of drawn out southern you know kind of accents and things like that, it seems a little comical at times. I think some work better than others. Uh, I get that obviously, you know, Americans were an occupying force in Afghanistan, so you probably, it makes sense to have um, American characters here, but some of the kind of, the clearly kind of fake accents kind of don't help. The acting, generally speaking, is a mixed bag. Like I said, it's not helped by some truly horrendous kind of dialogue. Um, uh, but you know it's it's possible for a kind of a, a low budget B movie. Let me put it like that. But you're not going to be thinking, no, that's some sort of acting. But there were a couple of, like I said, there are a couple of characters here that I did think turned a, a reasonable kind of performance. Um, you know, the, the the actual kind of aesthetic looks a little cheap at times. We've seen Top Gun Maverick um, at the cinema, and although that's clearly obviously a, a considerably higher budget movie than this, when we have our kind of our, our you know. Our, Sort of scenes at the beginning of the movie with the kind of these fighter jets the, the the first sequence is you kind of looking at that and, and thinking man that looks so cheap compared to top gun maverick which is a, pretty much a movie that everyone has seen i would say um and that kind of sets the tone for this movie i just think it kind of feels like uh that the budget was was less than the ambition of this movie the creatures themselves are i don't think are as classic as the werewolves or the kind of the uh the creatures from the descent they kind of seem like generic kind of alien style kind of monsters and that they kind of seem a little bulky uh, to me and then we have these sequences where they're like jumping huge distances and things like that and it's like i don't really know why uh their legs just seem like the, the same kind of like you know as human legs but and if anything they seem bulkier and weightier so i'm not quite understanding how they're doing like these huge leaps and things like this and you know there's some kind of logic as usual again this is this movie is kind of filled with stuff like that you know why are these kind of things all kind of coming out a lot to life now with things like that it just so happens 
even to be honest with you, where um, you, you know we have uh, this um, Sinclair just stumbles upon this kind of uh, this Russian um, black site. It really doesn't seem that far away from this base. I can't understand how they would not have come across this before, to be honest with you. Um, there's clearly kind of power and stuff coming from it. Again, it's just a little bit kind of silly uh, and, and kind of hokey at times. I have to be honest as well, The again, this is going to be a hard thing to critique without spoiling it, but I'll do my best. The last act of this movie, I felt, was... Um, it clearly was to have this big action finale. But to me, it's one of those sequences where we've got to go and rescue someone, which ultimately causes the death of far many people. So it kind of seems like that sh probably shouldn't have happened. Uh, and there's even a sequence where the person being rescued is like, don't come rescue me. And if they hadn't said anything, they wouldn't have done. It's kind of like, oh, that was really kind of clumsily handled. Um, again, I don't want to say too much about the ending, but there's, there's, there's a few elements that involve that after that that I felt were kind of like, well, I don't know if that really worked. And it kind of seems a little bit silly. There's also a, a, an attempt here, I think, to have moments a little bit too similar to, um, you know, Neil Marshall's other films. There's like a sequence for, that, that I thought was, that came very close to kind of imitating the uh, the character of Spoon in, in um, Dog Soldiers fighting a werewolf. Kind of a similar thing happens in this movie with one of the kind of the characters. And they've all got their kind of quirky kind of traits and things like that, which is okay. Um, it seems like a, a hybrid movie, to be honest with you, with the concept of Dog Soldiers and The Descent, but never really reaches that kind of... Um, that level of either sophistication, uh, good character work, the writing, or the kind of like the um, just the kind of the quality levels that those two movies had. It feels like a like someone else has seen Dog Soldiers and said, "I can't make this kind of hybrid movie," but it's actually the same director. It is still entertaining though. This movie, you know, is by no means a, a hold to torch to those those two, but it's it's kind of to me along the same levels of Doomsday. If, and it seems it's kind of a similar movie in a way to that uh, kind of um, that sort of movie. So if you like Doomsday but you prefer more of a uh, sci-fi horror, I think maybe this one would be a, would be a watch. So how to kind of score this one? I can't say this really is a good movie to be honest with you because I think the actual the nuts and bolts of it do make this kind of a, a somewhat shoddily put together. But I still think it's an entertaining movie, so I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10, bang in the middle, because to me, if you can kind of accept this is maybe not a particularly well put together movie, but it is still an entertaining movie, then I think a 5 out of 10 is a fair score. Um, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.